everybody. Today we're going to talk about probability. And with the probability, we're going to specifically talk about some certain vocabulary words that we use to describe the likelihood of outcomes. So let's take a look at our I can statement for today. And then we will dive a little bit deeper into these vocabulary words. I can use the words impossible, unlikely, equally likely, likely, and certain to describe the likelihood or the probability of outcomes or events. So we are going to predict the probability or outcomes of events by using these vocabulary words. So before we start, let's go ahead and review the vocabulary words that we learned from yesterday. The first one is impossible. And that just means that there is no chance of an event happening. And if you look at this die, a regular die has six sides labeled one through six. There is no number seven on the die, so it's impossible to roll a seven. Unlikely means that it will probably not happen. Little chance of happening. Okay, so if you look at this rectangle right here, there, it is unlikely that we're going to pick a triangle because there's more of the other shapes than any than the triangle. Equally likely means that each event has the same chance of occurring. And I know in a coin toss, it is equally likely to land on heads and tails because there is one side of each. Likely means that it will probably happen and there's a good chance it will happen. On this spinner, it is likely to land on the letter A because there's more A's on that spinner than any other letter. And certain, definitely happen. I am 100% sure. And if you look at this rectangle, I am certain or 100% sure that I will choose a circle from this box because that's all there is in that box. So to begin, let's talk about fair and unfair. Is this spinner fair? Why or why not? Well, I'm looking at that spinner and I'm thinking that that spinner is not fair because even though I see four colors, the pieces and the sizes of the colors are not the same. So they are not equal, so it is not fair. So let's take a look. Which color is the spinner most likely to land on? Well, if I look at the spinner closely, I know that yellow has the biggest space on that spinner, so it is most likely to land on yellow. What are all the possible outcomes of this spinner? What does that mean? That means is if I were to spin the spinner, what are all the possible colors I could land on? Well, I know I can land on yellow. I can also land on red. I can also land on blue, and I can also land on green. So there are four possible outcomes if I were to spin that spinner. Let's take a look at another spinner. Is this spinner fair? Why or why not? Well, looking at this spinner, I know it's not fair because there are three colors and each of those colors do not have the same size pieces. So it's not going to be fair. So my answer would be no. Which color is the spinner most likely to land on? Well, looking at the spinner, red has the biggest piece of that spinner, so I know it's most likely to land on red. Which color is the spinner least likely to land on? Least likely means it probably will not happen. So I know that blue is the smallest piece. So I know that blue is least likely to land on. And finally, what are the, all the possible outcomes of that spinner? Well, I know if I were to spin that spinner, I can spin a blue. I could spin a red. Or I can spin a green. So there are three possible outcomes for that spinner. Okay, I'm going to take a look at another spinner. Is this spinner fair? Why or why not? 
Well, I notice that all of the pieces are the same size, which is great, and each color has one piece. So I know that this spin spinner is fair. Yes, I would agree that it is fair. So looking at it, which color is the spinner most likely to land on? Well, I can't decide on that because all of them have the same amount of space in that spinner. So it would be all of them are equally likely or most likely to land on. And what are all the possible outcomes of the spinner? Well, I know if I spun that spinner, I could land on a green. I can land on a red. I can land on a blue. Or I can land on a yellow. So there are four possible outcomes for that spinner. Now, let's step it up a notch and take a look at this spinner. Do you think this spinner is fair? Why or why not? Well, let's take a look at that spinner. I know that there's eight pieces in that spinner and each piece is the same size. However, the letters do not have the same number of pieces. So let's take a look at the letters closely. A, there are two pieces with that letter. B has one piece. C, has one piece, E has three pieces, and F has one piece. So even though each of the size of the pieces on this spinner are the same size, the letters don't all have the same number of pieces, so it is not a fair spinner. So taking a look at that spinner, let's think. Which letter is the spinner most likely to land on? Well, looking at the spinner, E has more spaces than any other letter, so E would most likely be the letter to land on. And then which letters is the spinner equally likely or have the same amount of probability to land on? Well, I can see that B, C, and F all have the same number of pieces. So B, C, and F all have an equally likely chance of landing on that. What are all the possible outcomes of this spinner? Which means that what are all the letters that you could possibly land on? Well, there is an A, B, C, E, and F. So there are five possible outcomes for this spinner. Now that we have a good idea of fair and unfair spinners and our probability statements, let's go ahead and we're going to step it up a notch even further by creating spinners. We're going to create a spinner that is likely to land on red. Go ahead and pause this video and think about what that word likely means. Now that you've unpaused the video, likely is that it probably will happen. Okay, so I want to make sure that red has more space on this spinner than any other color. So I can divide this spinner up into as many pieces as I want. As long as red takes up the most amount of space on this spinner. So as you can see, that red has more space than any other color. Doesn't matter what other colors I use, as long as red takes up the most amount of space. And I can fill in this square spinner just like my other spinner. Remember, the other colors do not matter as long as red has the most amount of space because it is likely. Okay, let's create another spinner. It's asking us to create a spinner that is unlikely. Okay, unlikely, small chance of landing on green. So we can only have a little space for green. Everything else needs to be more, um, another color. So if I were to maybe 
put this spinner into six pieces. Doesn't matter how many pieces, remember, as long as green has the smallest amount of pieces. I need to make sure all of the other colors have more pieces than green. Okay? There's only one green piece on this spinner, and the rest, orange has more than green, and pink has more than green. So I think we're good on that one. Let's take a look at our square spinner. Well, I'm going to color this one yellow, and this one yellow, and this one yellow. And then I'm going to color this one green. Do you see how green only has one space and yellow has three other spaces? So it's unlikely, but not impossible, to land on green. All right, let's take a look at this spinner we want to create. It says to create a spinner that is certain to land on blue. Certain means it's going to happen. So let's pause this video and think, what should we do to create a spinner that will land on blue? How are we going to color these spinners? When you are ready, unpause your video. Okay, now that you've unpaused the video, let's see if you have built the spinner the same as me. Well, I know that certain means it's going to happen, it has to happen, so every space on this spinner needs to be blue. The whole spinner needs to be blue. And on this spinner, it's, if it's certain to land on blue, all of the spaces need to be colored in blue because there's no chance of any other color. It has to land on blue. Did you get that right? I'm sure you did. Great job. So let's go ahead and wrap up our lesson and see if we've accomplished our goal for the day. Did we use the words impossible, unlikely, equally likely, likely, uncertain to describe the likelihood of outcomes or events? If you said yes, I'd agree. Great job today.